Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for being here. Welcome to um, our debate this evening, and uh, we're very excited about it. But what's even more exciting is that we are privileged to be in this wonderful room at Miracosta College, and I'd like to invite the acting superintendent, President Dick Robertson, to welcome us here. Dick? Thank you very much. How appropriate that the chamber chose this venue for an election forum for Miracosta College trustee candidates. To those of you visiting the campus, welcome to this beautiful site. To those of you who are interested in this whole election issue, this is a wonderful time and place to get information, to find out what's happening, and to participate in America's wonderful democratic process. We're glad that you're on this campus, a place where we believe that it is important to discuss issues, to be interested in what's happening in our world, and especially right now in our own area. We hope this evening will bring to you the information that you seek, and I'm pleased especially to welcome our candidates to Miracosta College's dais. Have a great evening. Okay, uh, once again, welcome. Uh, this is a great opportunity because as the election period approaches us, we're all faced with the same problem. Who do we vote for? And usually, we are limited to information which is provided to us by the candidates. And that could be something they've written or a, a famous PR firm may have written it. Uh, we sometimes have the feeling that it's difficult to make a decision. So uh, some people will choose the prettiest face. Uh, start, sorry, Rick. Uh, or <laughs> it, it could be uh, just somebody who has the most signs around town. And what we like to do is offer you an opportunity to get to know these candidates, especially in an unprepared situation. And that's what this is all about. Everything that they hear tonight, the candidates will be surprised. Uh, because the questions have been created with no advance notice uh, to the candidates. Now, for this position uh, at the uh, Miracosta College uh, Board of Trustees, there are four candidates. Uh, two of them have not shown up, and uh, you'll have to find some other way to find out what they believe in, but we have two wonderful candidates here. One is an incumbent, uh, Jean, and the other one is a non-incumbent, and that's Rick. And so we'll find out uh, whether they are a match. And uh, so we're excited to, to be here today. Now, my name is Bill Imms, and I am the master questionnaire, <clears throat> the official interrogator. I have nothing to do with Miracosta College, and uh, I don't even live in the community um, which the trustees uh, are responsible for. But I am a volunteer in the city of Oceanside, and the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce is an extraordinary organization because it's not just all about business. It's about the entire community, and they have a committee called the Backpack Committee, and the, that acronym stands for the Business and Community Political Action Committee. And it's their belief that the more you know, the smarter you can vote. So we choose four races uh, to feature each year. Last week we had two, tonight we have two. And uh, what we do, we ask uh, other chambers of commerce, we ask other people to submit ideas of concern with which they would like to have questions. And so we have them here. And I have not seen all these questions until this morning, and they are not shared with any of the candidates. <clears throat> so it will be a surprise to everyone, and I hope they are beneficial in helping you select to select the ideal person to represent you. We have four candidates that I mentioned. We have two who are here. So we will be featuring these two candidates. We have uh, uh, several questions. And um, some of the questions, we will ask the same question of each candidate. And others, we will ask different questions from each candidate, just to kind of keep it interesting. And because there are only two, I may take a little license and ask a few more questions of these candidates. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you, both of you, for being here, for volunteering to make the community better. And uh, I think it's great that you're doing that. And uh, for those of you in the audience, thank you for being smarter voters by listening to the candidates and helping you make your choice. 
Okay, uh, now our questions are timed. Actually, the answers to the questions are timed. And so we have two timekeepers. We have David Nidigger, who is the executive officer for the Oceanside Chamber <coughs> of Commerce. And we have Debbie Allen, um, who is a past president. Uh, I knew you were on so many organizations, Debbie. And uh, so we have two timekeepers. So um, it just makes sure we can be as accurate and as fair as possible in keeping time. Now, we want you not to be thinking about time as you answer the questions. So we have two flags to show you. Uh, when uh, most of our questions, you will have 45 seconds to answer the question a after I've asked it. And when you have spent the majority of that time, 30 seconds, and you have 15 seconds left, you'll see this yellow sign which says 15 minutes to go. Seconds. Seconds, seconds. seconds. excuse seconds. me. Oh, We're thank you very much. Really yeah, really I forgot really who's <laughs> talking. Okay, and uh, then uh, once you've uh, spent your time, you will get the red flag that uh, says and a ding, and Dave gets a little more nervous than our other timer, <laughs> so uh, you'll know that time is up at that point. So, are we ready? We're ready. Yes, sir, let's Great, go. thank you. And um, since there are only two of you, uh, whoever is first is not that much different than from being second to answer the question, so I'll probably go back and forth to make it as fair as possible. So, um, we're going to start with a question. And uh, the first question is, and I'm going to ask Eugene if you'd be kind enough to respond to the question first. What is your understanding of collegial government? Well, my understanding is that it's a process, whereas everybody comes together, it might be a committee or, um, you know, a different group, and they discuss the issue you're trying to bring different factions together to come to a consensus of what would be best for the college, and that's a collegial, much longer than we have in business, but uh, it works. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I would like to ask you the same question, Rick. Would you like me to repeat it? No, I got it. Yeah, what she said. No. <laughs> <laughs> I make the jokes. No, I'm no, sorry. <laughs> Collegial governance or shared governance, as I see it, is when you you involve all constituent groups. You involve, um, if possible, students, staff, uh, faculty, administration to come to consensus on decision making, and then that those decision and the board, of course, and then those decisions are brought forward. But it's a it's a collaborative. It, it, everybody buys in basically, and if the stakeholders buy in, it's a lot easier to to move forward with things. So Great. Thank you very much. Now, I'm going to ask you this question first, Rick, and then, Gene, you'll have an opportunity to respond after Rick does. How will you envision your relationship as a board member with your new superintendent president? Rick? So, and I know who the person is, <clears throat> and being a new person myself, the, the beginning would be just getting to know each other and getting to know the board, et cetera. And, um, I would um, want to know what this person's vision for the college is. I'd want to know what the board's vision for the college is. And again, using collegial governance or shared governance, find our common ground and try to do the best that we can to continue to keep Miracosta as the best community college in California. Great. Thank you. Jean? I can't do the ditto thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but actually you two would make a great team, I'd like to, to say. Um, well, I think it would be very similar. Uh, it was very interesting when Dick Robertson took over uh, when Dr. Rodriguez left, and it's been, a, you know, a really pleasure because uh, I didn't really know Dick very well. I, You know, he sat up on the dais um, for the years that I've been here, and but I didn't really know him, and... Uh, it was, you know, just a pleasure to have meetings with him, try to understand the issues and get more background on things from the college. Great. Thank you. And I'm going to ask one more general question um, because we've been talking about a new superintendent president, and I understand the, the selection committee is almost all completed uh, with their interview, but if the final decision were up to you, and Gene, I'm going to ask you to respond to this first. If you were the final interviewer, what would you be looking for in a candidate? 
Well, I think we had this question at one of the board meetings of what are the qualities that we find most important in a superintendent president. And I think integrity and honesty was one of one of the issues. Someone that has a vision, um, we're very concerned about students succeeding and being able to, you know, transfer or finish their degrees, whatever that might be. And I think that um, that's another issue. And then, you know, to have a vision for the college, I think that would be. Great, yeah. thank you. And, and Rick, if you were the final interviewer, what would you be looking for in a candidate? Yeah, just to piggyback, I think vision is the biggest thing. And I think somebody who is open to new ideas of the 21st century, I think, you know, we're looking at things like laptops are going away, computers are going away, people are going to tablets and, and cell phones, et cetera. We need to look at the, the, the needs of our students in the next century, and we need to look at the community out there. We need someone with vision that can look at things with new eyes that a lot of us that have been around for a long time have difficulty with. So vision is really the first thing that comes to my mind. Okay, and Rick, this question is for you. In your ballot statement, you state, Rick has the financial expertise to ensure our tax dollars are spent wisely. What exactly is your financial expertise? Yeah, so I've been a community college uh, counselor and professor for about 30 years. I sit on the district budget committee in the San Diego Community College District, and I don't I don't control the budget, but as a member on that district budget committee, I get a real good feel for how our budget is run. And I'm proud to say that in San Diego, uh, we have some very, very uh, fiscally conservative management styles. And we've never had to lay anybody off. We've never had any work furloughs. Um, and we've maintained um, budget reserves. I sit on the Cardiff School Board, and it's the same thing. And the Cardiff School Board, no layoffs. We, we pay teachers well. Uh, et cetera. And here at Miracosa, I'd want to do the same thing. I'd want to continue to hire the best and the brightest, but I'd want to have enough money to serve students well, but I'd also want to maintain solid fiscal reserves. Great. Thank you very much. And Jean, I have a different question for you. In your ballot statement, you comment about maintaining a balanced budget. What are the struggles in balancing the Miracosta College budget? And what is the major source of income for the district and the major expense? Uh, the major source of income is the property tax base within the district. 95% of our income comes from that source, and the remainder 5% come from the federal and state government. Uh, the biggest expense is salaries and benefits. Um, and the question of balancing the budget, well, the first year that I was on the board, we were um, in the red, we were eating into our reserves to run operations, and you know that, from an accounting standpoint, that is not a good place to be. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Okay, um, Rick, I'm going to ask you this next question first, please. If you had the ability to change one thing at the college immediately, what would it be? It would depend if I had a magic wand or enough money, but I think the biggest thing would be um, to improve facilities. I think that right now we have um, a budget reserve to work on that. I think that it's very important that we have state-of-the-art facilities for our students, and um, I think that's probably, you know, I've heard that we have a nursing program that's overcrowded, and we, we have some veterans that need a veteran center. So if there was a magic wand and unlimited money, that would be the thing. Without unlimited money, we have to do some very make some very hard budget decisions and try to save money and try to, to make, create situations where we could um, work with the, the facilities a little bit better. Uh, and just as a follow-up on the items uh, like the nursing and the veterans and so forth, if there was one area you were going to tackle first of the items which you mentioned, what might that be? Um, well, facilities was the major item, so it's around those things, so okay. facilities. Okay, thank you very much. Jean, would you like me to ask you the question again? Sure. Okay. If you had the ability to change one thing at the college immediately, what would it be? I, you know, I want to say that it's facilities also, um, but I think in 
because that is a great need that we have. But I think that having a successful student success program is probably the number one thing that I would like to see. I would like to, you know, we're, we, we've set up the plan. It's tied into our, you know, master plan now. And I think we're on the road to getting there. Um, and we've done some really great things with the bridge, math bridge program this summer. And I just like to see that expanded. And I think that we're on the way to do that. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Jean, I'd like to ask you this next question first, please. What are the major challenges and opportunities uh, that, which Miracosta College ha will have in the next two years? Um, well, I think the facilities is going to be a major problem. Um, we went through the budget. We went through a five-year plan to determine how much of our reserves we can use to improve the facilities. And, you know, we, we have a good reserve, but it's not unlimited, and we don't have enough to, to build a building. Um, we have to, would have to borrow money. And so whenever you have debt, you know, it's a, it's a concern. And, you know, we just can't do it all. We're going to have to come up with some other kind of plan in order to improve the facilities here. Great. Thank you. Okay. Rick, um, what are the major challenges, opportunities at Miracosta College uh, for the next two years? I would agree. I mean, as I said before, facilities, I think, is the biggest challenge, and there, there need to be some creative ways to address that. And I think the biggest opportunity, again, to piggyback on what Jean said, is student success. As, as a counselor and a, a, student, success, a um, student services person, the Triple SP plan, the Student Success Support Program, um, I think is really key. And we're, even though we are funded primarily through tax money, we do get restricted funds through the Triple SP uh, funds. So we do, will get extra money for that. So I think that's both a challenge and an opportunity that gives us the ability to um, to serve our students better, to get them trained out there working, get them transferred, and get their degrees quicker. Thank you. Rick, um, as a board member, what do you hope to accomplish during the next four years? You know, I, uh, again, you know, the things that we've, in addition to the things that I've already talked about, I think that I would like to, um, one of the unique things that I have is I'd, I'd like to go to Sacramento and I'd like to, to lobby for better funding for community colleges and for, for possibly, uh, helping to bridge the gap between community colleges and universities. And currently, there's a plan where certain community colleges will be able to offer bachelor's programs, but they're in areas like auto tech and diesel and things like that. But I think we need to be able to offer bachelor's programs in nursing and some of our other vocational programs. So that would be one of the things that I'd like to do is just to do some bigger picture things. Great. Thank you. Jean, what would you like to accomplish during the next four years? Well, I'd like to continue some of the things that we've started. One is the student success plan. Um, trying to come up with the answers for the facilities uh, um, to um, try to think of all the other things that we have that we talk about. Uh, answer the 50 percent, you know, uh, test issue. We have to address that. And um, there's just a number of things, you know, that we deal with all the time, and I, you know, I'd like to see them through. I guess is I'm trying to think of all the other ones. I'm sorry. No problem. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to ask you the next question, Jean. Okay. You state in your ballot statement that you want to help Miracosta obtain. Uh, I think it's attain all its goals and objectives. What are Miracosta's goals and objectives, and what specifically will you do to help the district attain those? Well, I think the main thing is that Miracosta is a vanguard institution, and that's what we want to be. And we want to see students, you know, be able to persist in their studies, 
transfer or graduate. The, that's the main thing. Um, we want to, um, and I think that from my standpoint, that the things that I can do to help as a board member is provide funding for certain programs and uh, facilities and, and, and the like. Okay, thank you. Rick, you are identified as a community college professor. Can you please name the colleges where you currently teach? I teach uh, psychology at San Diego Miramar College, and um, San Diego Miramar College is the primary place where I work. I do some counseling at City College as well. Okay. Any uh, assignments have to do with Miracosta? No, I do not have any Miracosta assignments. Okay, thank you. Okay, I have uh, some general questions, and I will ask each of you the same question. And Rick, I will start with you. How important is it to the future of Miracosta College to pursue a four-year degree program? Yeah, well, I mentioned that. You know, I'm, I think, I, I don't know that it's vitally important, but I think that it's important for our students to be able to get four-year degrees. And Cal State San Marcos is difficult to get into, and luckily we're close to that. But San Diego State is almost impossible to get into now as a transfer student. Um, UCSD is almost impossible to get into. You have to have a 3.5 GPA on a 4.0 scale, up from a guarantee at a 3.0. So we don't have enough room at our, at our universities. We have students coming to community colleges that have different levels of preparedness, and we prepare them to transfer to a university, but then because San Diego is such a popular place, they say, well, we'll accept you at Humboldt. So I think it is it's relatively important for us to offer university opportunities for our local students. Great. Thank you. Jean, would you like me to repeat the question? Please. How important is it to the future of Miracosta College to pursue a four-year degree program? I don't think that it's that important to the future of Miracosta. It's probably more as an opportunity for the students to, to have that availability in certain areas. Uh, if you were trying to get a four-year degree in, a, in an area that you can't get into San Diego State or San Marcos, then if we were able to provide that, it would be you know, a much more reasonable cost to the student and, uh, you know, we have great teachers here, and I think they'd get a good education. Great. Thank you. Rick, student success means many things to many people. What is your personal definition of student success? It's a great question because I've spent my whole career as a counselor in, in student success. Um, <clears throat> but I don't, it's a tough answer. I think for me is preparing a student to be a successful person, to preparing, preparing students to be successful citizens, which means, of course, the basic skills, but possibly learning a vocation, learning how to work, learning how to make enough money to support yourself, but learning how to be a citizen, learning how to be a person who can go out there, make enough money to support your family, but also be a citizen that can take care of your family and be a community member and give something back to your community. So it's educating the whole person. I think student success is not just about school, but it's about human success. Thank you. Jean, student success means many things to many people. What is your personal definition of student success? I see it as an individual that can, if they're having trouble you know with basic skills or whatever that they can get the support here to be able to finish and I think that's what really matters we want to see people finish um, because then they can go on and either get a job or you know go on and get a four-year degree which hopefully then they will be able to get another job right and that is seems to me the, the biggest thing that's the success that I'd like to see. Thank you. And Jean, I'll start with you on this question. Okay. What do you see as the single biggest roadblock to maintaining accreditation for Miracosta College? Single roadblock. Um, well, I think we're much better placed 
um, in our accreditation status because the college really got behind uh, our last go round with the board and uh, we have the criteria in place, the, you know, the data, uh, the SLOs, we have all of those in place in order to be able to present to the AJCC. Did I say that right? <laughs> ACCJC. ACCJC, excuse me. I knew there was a few more letters in there. Okay, thank you. And Rick, what do you see as the biggest roadblock to maintaining accreditation for AmeriCosta College? You know, I don't, I don't really see any, any major roadblocks, to be honest with you. And I'm a what you see is what you get kind of guy. Um, I think the ACCJC is probably the biggest roadblock because there have been problems with them. There's been, I'm serious, there's been problems with things they've done in San Francisco. There are things that they're, they're, there's just problems there. And I think that we're, we're doing our, our SLOs here. We've got, you know, we've got good programs. We've got good professors. We've got a good board. I don't see that there's anything that we're doing here that, that would prevent us from having, um, continuing to be accredited. Okay, um, now, now that concludes all the questions that were given to us because there were four candidates. So I just made up another question. <laughs> and, this is um, hard. <laughs> Rick, I'd like to start with you, if I may. What is the one question you wished I had asked? Uh, um, let's see. I guess the one question I wish you would have asked would have been what would be my, my three top priorities or the three things, the three selling points that I have about myself. Shall I answer that? Or uh, please do, okay. it because if I answer it, it won't do as much good as you okay. do. So. <laughs> Number one, that I've had a career, a 30-year career in student services and instruction where I have, am committed to serving community college students. Uh, Number two, that um, I have the experience to lead from my budget experience as a faculty member to my budget and, and uh, board experience in the Cardiff Unified School District. And number three is that um, I am a, a, a good trustee of the public, I am a good uh, trustee of the public trust. I think that you can trust me with your money. I think that uh, I have proven that solid uh, financial background in terms of making sure that we always have enough money to pay our bills, making sure that we have a healthy reserve, and that we still can provide excellent services and classes to our students while still continuing to be able to hire the best of the best at Maricosta College, and that's what Maricosta is known for. Great. Thank you very much. Jean, I'm going to ask you the same thing. What is the one thing you wished I had asked you? Why I do this? <laughs> no. That's fair. I mean, I guess that's a really good question. Why do I do this? Because, I mean, this is very exciting for me, I mean, doing it, being on the board. Um, I have a background in education, and I have taught at the college level, so I know how hard it is for teachers out there. Um, and from a financial standpoint, I enjoy, you know, looking at the budget and making sure things balance. <laughs> and so I, you know, I really have enjoyed my time in trying to get consensus and come together in support of the college and moving it forward. Great, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm trying to benefit everyone as much as I can by coming up with questions. I just thought of one, and I, I, uh, I don't have the blessing of backpack on this question, <laughs> but, uh, Gene, if you were to ask Rick one question, what might that be? Um, we talked earlier. I, you know, it's interesting. What might that be? Um, I guess how your time in counseling and what you've done there, how would that interplay with the board and, you know, making us a stronger board and moving us forward? You would, answer would you that? like to answer that? <laughs> yes. And I guess it would be, um, you know, seeing things from the student perspective, seeing things from the faculty perspective, just seeing it from that perspective and being able to, to use that unique perspective up here to 
help us all to understand where faculty is coming from and that um, you know we need to not necessarily micromanage but manage in broad strokes and we need to hire people that we trust to take our vision forth that would be kind of how I would use that okay thanks uh, and and Rick would you like to ask Jean one question um, why do you do it no <laughs> I did that one. Um, <laughs> um, I guess if there were being a new board member, um, and I'm very respectful of people that, people's experience and people that have been here, um, what words of advice would you give to me as a new board member to make this board stronger and to keep this school as strong as we could? Well, I think you come from a you know different place than I did, you know, with a lot of the issues in a community college because. There was a whole language that I had to learn when I first started on the board that I hadn't a clue. As I say, that was my big learning curve. And other issues that, of you know, the governance and, you know, how people came to decision making. Um, and I, I think that um, I would sit back and take it in first be, and assess it and then give your you know, information, because I know that it's, it's easy sometimes to charge in, and, and generally that's usually not the best way to go. <laughs> I agree. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I was just handed a question. Oh, my goodness. And um, <laughs> the question is, and Jean, I'll ask you first, okay. would you send your children to Miracosta College? Oh, definitely. And my niece went here and graduated in, uh, in administration of justice and got her AA and then she went to UCSD um, in communications and graduated from UCSD. So, Thank you. I can say that she was very pleased with the education she got here. Thank you. Rick? And I can say that I do. I send my stepdaughter, uh, Alexander, here. She is majoring in Japanese. She has found her passion in life. We, she's taken this semester off because we're sending her to Japan to study for three months. And I proudly send her here. And I, I knew Maricosa was a good place, but until I started driving her here and hanging out and seeing her homework, I, I, I didn't realize what a, a real top-notch community college this really is. And I'm being totally honest with that. Great. So I do. Well, um, that concludes the questions. And I want to thank both of you for putting up with me, adding a couple of uh, uh, questions in there as well. I want to thank you very much for being 50% of those people running for this position who showed up to uh, subject themselves to questions which they <laughs> didn't know what they were going to be. And I admire your um, uh, putting yourself uh, into the position to where you may be elected or not. And gosh, if there are two positions available from my perspective, I couldn't think of two better people than the ones we had here today. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you.